From the hit sitcom Fresh Off the Boat on ABC to the iconic movie Crazy Rich Asians, we already knew actress Constance Wu had range. But in her latest project, Wu plays a hard-charging reporter alongside Chris Pratt in the thriller The Terminalist. She sat down with our Phil Lipoff to talk about the new series, her life off of social media, and her fight for representation in Hollywood. Twelve SEALs lost and no one in command even issues a statement? Nothing in this file adds up. Well, I'm not crazy. You need somebody to help you prove it. You're not at war. You're at home. There's a difference. Not anymore. So let's talk about the terminal list because I, I was getting set to ask you about the, the atmosphere on set anyways because it is so uh, alpha male, testosterone laden. Totally. You know, SEAL Team 7, and there you are. And your your character is equally as strong, just in, in a different way. You're not going out there with a, with a gun and you know, trying to save the world, but you're trying to find the truth. Yeah, my, my character, Katie Burnick, she doesn't take any BS, which is part of what makes her a great journalist. She's not trying to, like, appease any, like, journalism standards or ideas. She's just trying to get to the truth of the matter. And in the case of Chris Pratt's character, um, James Reese, there is a lot that goes on, and it's very personal because these Navy SEALs, the, the, the platoon, they train together. They, like, go into these dangerous situations together. Yeah, it's truly a family. So when something happens to them, it's like something happening to your family. Investigations are still ongoing into the failures of Operation Odin Sword. Failed missions resulted in the death of 12 Navy SEALs. And I think um, Katie, my character, really cares about that and cares about having justice for these families. And so she sort of um, helps Reese. How did this, we'll get into the series in a minute, but how did this play on, on set being a mom and doing this? So that, I think this is the first project. It was my first project back after giving birth. And, you know, I was nervous about it because your life changes so much when you have a baby. Um, but one of the wonderful things was Chris Pratt and his wife, they had a baby kind of around the same time. So he was hyper cognizant and caring about all the things I needed to do, whether it was uh, pumping or breastfeeding or getting on the phone with the pediatrician. Like, your priorities really change when you have a baby and they change in the best way. Like, life has never been better. And um, that was one of the best things about working on Terminal List was how much they cared about that. Because you're living for someone other than your, just yourself at that moment. Which, yeah, which, and right, Chris was everything. too, yeah, for yeah. his daughter, Lila. So when you get this material, because it's based on a book, because this guy has written it, do you prepare any different than if it's just complete fiction? I honestly try to be very democratic about it in terms of, like, I treat them all the same. I really just try to understand who they are as humans. In a way, when it's... I'll find it. When it's not a real person, it's almost a little more freeing because you get to sort of build the world around them a little more. Um, but, I mean, it was great having such amazing source material. Uh, yeah, and such a great team behind me. So... Fresh off the boat, Crazy Rich, Rich Asians, and you were on the Times 100 most. I mean, you, you, th those few years from, what was it, 17 to... Uh, oh, God, they all blend together yeah. for me. And those... so it's like pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. That's how I think of things now. That, that is the, Isn't yeah, it funny? That's, that's what the world is. Yeah. Uh, so pre-pandemic, um, those years, uh, you were very vocal about representation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you opened a lot of eyes to it. Do you think Hollywood has done a good job since then with, with representation of all kinds? Um, I mean, nothing's ever final, right? Everything is always a process. And so you have two steps forward, one step back, four steps forward, five steps back, six, you know, like this, these are things that happen. Um, and I definitely was back when I had social media, because I don't have it anymore. I don't use it anymore. I think people thought like, oh, now she's not on social media. She's not activist. But we forget that there are real things that can be done politically and just functionally in your life that are a type of activism that don't have to be spread on social media. And I think those small moments and gestures and awarenesses just even within your small circle of things which 10 years ago you wouldn't have thought was a problem, those things have changed. And I think those small changes are what is going to bring about a slow shift in culture for equality. Okay, so I gotta dive into two things there. Go for it. First, 
When did you get off social media? How was that decision? And how have you felt since you've been off social media? Not being on social media has been very peaceful. I bet. And, you know, I grew up in the 90s. I'm a 90s kid. Uh, more power to these Gen Z kids. I just turned 40, so I've, I feel like I can tell, talk about them as like those kids who, uh, you know, this is their primary form of communication. It's just not how I grew up, so it's not intuitive to me. Um, and it can be detrimental to your It can. Your I just and... didn't want to, like, I will sometimes spend an entire weekend without looking at my phone once. <sighs> for some kids, they can't even fathom that. But no. for me... It just harkens back to childhood. The shrugging shoulders emoji doesn't do it for you. <laughs> nope. How long has it been? Uh, I stopped before the pandemic. Wow, years. Yeah. Will, you, you'll ever, will you ever go back? <laughs> to, to be continued. Yeah. Um, OK, so let's talk about the other part, the more important part. I was just blown away by the fact that you're not on social media, and I wanted to I know, it's, why, it's hard to not be on I would it. love to do that. You know, I picture, I picture cra crazy rich Asians um, and fresh off the boat, and then I've got this picture of you in a car, you know, getting crashed into. <laughs> it's a very different oh, and world yeah. and terminalist. Do you like this kind of action, adventure, kind of hardcore, dive into a car and smash really? it up thing? Are you going to do more of that? What do you see in the future? Well, the thing is, the way I choose my next project is always I kind of want to do something different than the thing before. So the thing I did before terminalist. Um, was Hustlers, where I played a stripper mm -hmm. with J-Lo. Um, and then I did Terminalist. And then after that, I did a children's movie, a musical, really, in terms of, like, flexing different muscles in, like, my artistic sense, um, trying different things. But it was, it was fun. It was definitely a challenge. And I like challenges because I think they're opportunities for growth. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, this thank was, you. This was so wonderful. It was nice I to talk to you. Really nice to talk to you, too. I can't wait to watch. Our thanks to Phil for that interview. The Terminal List is now streaming on Amazon Prime Video. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.